Welcome to our home. Thank you very much for attending. 24-7. This week on My Thoughts, I'd like to examine the concept of 24-7. You know, serving God is not a part-time job. It encompasses every moment of every day and is part and parcel in every facet of our lives. There is no time, nor is there any place, that is devoid of God's presence and his commandments. You know, when my daughter was younger, uh, she asked me once, she said, Dad, why can't we keep the Torah and Mitzvah six days of the week and then take one day off? Well, I explained to her that our strength in life comes from our attachment to the source, God Almighty himself. Detaching ourselves from our source is not an option. Imagine if you have an electrical appliance, but it wasn't plugged into a power source. You know, no matter how well the appliance operated, if it is not connected to an electrical outlet, well, basically it's useless. So too with each and every one of us. If we are not connected to our life force, God Almighty himself, and his commandments, then our lives have no real substance. Our mission in life is to try and reach the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, and become an Eved Hashem, a servant of God. The Torah testifies in the fifth book of the Torah in the portion of Zos HaBracha that on the last day of Moshe's life, God referred to him as a servant of God. As the saying goes, Eved Melech Melech, the servant of a king, is a king. Serving a king is an honor and a privilege. It's basically a full-time job, 24-7. We are all created with special and unique for a special and unique purpose, one that only we can fulfill, as we witness with Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, at the burning bush. God informed Moshe of his mission, which was to redeem the Jewish nation from their oppressive servitude in Egypt. At this moment in time, the nation lacked any merit of their own, seeing that they had sunk to the 49th level of impurity. Purity. Nonetheless, they were able to connect to the merit of the forefathers. This merit allowed them to reach Mount Sinai, where they received the Torah directly from God Almighty. Now, Moshe initially refused to accept his mission. So God was compelled to argue with him for seven days before he finally agreed to accept. You know, it seems really strange that God would have to persuade Moshe to accept his position. Moshe told God over and over again to send someone else. He felt that he was not the proper person for the job. Well, one would have thought that God should have listened to Moshe and chosen someone else. After all, he is God. But from this story, we learn an important lesson that we are taught in Pirkei Avot, the ethics of the fathers. There Hillel stated, Im ein ani li, me li, if I am not for myself then who will be for me? Taking the children out from the oppressive servitude in Egypt was Moshe's life mission, his and his alone. No one else was created to fulfill their task. So too with each one of us. We are all created with our own unique mission, one that only we can accomplish. The Chadushi Arim, the Ger Reb, has said that every Jew was created to fix something specific, tikkun ha'olam, something that no other Jew has the ability to correct. It then continues in the same mission in Pirkeiovos with the statement, "Vimlo akshav emosai," and if not now, then when, telling us that there exists within each and every hour of the day something that can only be accomplished during that time. Nonetheless. After one has accomplished all the details that they were created to fulfill, they still need to go past their personal duties and enter into the general assembly of the children of Israel, which is alluded to with the words of this Mishnah, that if I am only for myself, then what am I? Coming to the realization that the true essence of a Jew is to negate not only themselves, 
but also their actions, true bittal self-nullification, for the benefit of the nation of Israel and for the love of their Father in heaven. Every step that we take, every breath that we draw, brings us closer to fulfilling our mission here on earth. And that is what makes each and every one of us so important. Think of it as a jigsaw puzzle. Each piece has its own shape, size, and place. No piece, no piece can be substituted for another. In addition, if one piece is missing or lost, well, the whole puzzle is useless. Each one of us was created for a specific purpose in life. In order for us to fulfill our mission, we must dedicate all our time and efforts into hopefully becoming <clears throat> the person whom God Almighty meant for us to be as individuals. Yet, never losing sight of our quest to fill our spot is an integral part of the nation of Israel as a whole. You know, we witnessed that though Moshe was chosen from the moment of his birth to lead the nation of Israel out of slavery, Still, it was a process. It took him 80 years to reach the level where he developed the necessary qualities to fulfill his mission. Life is an ongoing process. We are not born complete, neither physically nor spiritually. We are, expect, we are expected to accept our partnership with God Almighty and to finish that which he had begun. You know, it was God who brought us into this world and to his world, excuse me. It is our job to return the court courtesy by bringing him into ours. Serving God is not a part-time job. The only way that we can hope to succeed is by 24-7. He expects us to be marathon runners, never giving up, always striving to bring him closer, both in our minds and in our hearts never going backwards, always moving forward 24-7. Any setbacks that we experience in life should be viewed as opportunities for growth, what we refer to as a Yerida Lutzarach Aliyah, a descent in order to attain a greater ascent. 24-7. Our connection to God and His Torah begins from the moment that we wake up in the morning. That is when we acknowledge and thank him for the gift of life that he bestows upon us daily. We begin our day with the words, I offer thanks to you, living and eternal King, for you have mercifully restored my soul within me. Your faithfulness is great. Our connection to God Almighty, our Father in heaven, encompasses every place and every facet of our lives. It extends throughout every room in our house, from the kitchen to the dining room, from the family room to the living room, from our bedroom to the bathroom. There's no place, no place that is devoid of his presence. You know, we end our days with the Shema Yisrael, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. We begin each, each and every day of our lives with words of gratitude and end each and every night with the words of love and allegiance to our Father in heaven, 24-7. God has given us his most precious possession, the Torah, his instruction manual. He expects us to follow his instructions to the letter. We are not permitted to innovate. We cannot add or subtract even one letter to his Torah. For example, we are all expected to pray three times a day. Yet, do we, yet we do not all pray out of the same prayer book, nor do we entertain the same thoughts in our prayers daily. Each day, our, con our concentration and our requests may be just a little different. Yet, as individuals, we all have different thoughts and intentions. However, when it comes down to the action, we are all expected to perform God's commandments identically. There is an allusion to this concept in the makeup of our tefillin. Both the hand and the head tefillin contain the same exact four paragraphs, which are found in the Torah. Now, these four paragraphs are placed inside of a square black box. Though both of these boxes contain the same four paragraphs, there is a difference between them. 
You see, the paragraphs that are found in the tefillin of the head are divided into four separate compartments, whereas the paragraphs written on the hand tefillin, though they contain the same identical four paragraphs, are all written on one piece of parchment and are inserted into one compartment. We view the head tefillin as an allusion to one's thoughts and the hand tefillin as an allusion to one's actions. The makeup of our tefillin can be seen as an allusion to the fact that we, as individuals, all entertain different thoughts and motivations. Expressing our individuality and our service of God is not only acceptable, it's even encouraged. Therefore, separate comp four separate compartments. However, when it, we fulfill our obligation in the performance of the commandments, action, then we must all follow exactly what God has instructed us to observe in his Torah. Therefore, all four paragraphs are bound together in one piece of parchment and placed into one compartment worn on our arm. I think this concept of both conformity and self-expression can best be understood by the way the Torah refers to our forefathers. You know, there are times when their names are listed one after the other, such as Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then there are other times, such as in the opening prayer of the Amidah, the standing prayer, where the name of God, Eloke, the God of, is inserted in between each of their names. The question we must ask is, why? I think that it teaches us an important lesson in our service of God. On the one hand, our forefathers were identical in their allegiance to God Almighty. On the other hand, they served him, each with their own special unique traits. Abraham, Avram, with kindness. Yitzchak, Isaac, with discipline. And Yaakov, Jacob, with beauty. Now Yaakov succeeded in combining the traits of his father and his grandfather together into one. Following God's commandments has the added benefit of not only directing us on the right path, but it is essential in keeping us on that path. In life, there are many projects that we begin, but do we have the perseverance, the discipline to stay the course? Beginnings are essential, taking a swing. But following through, staying the course, is the essence of life, the key to success. 24-7. As it states in Pirkei Avos, the ethics of the fathers, Rib Tarfin said, Lo alecha hamalocha ligmar. It is not incumbent upon you to complete the work. Yet, are you, yet you are not free to desist from it either. We are commanded to begin. Whether we do or whether we do not, well, that is our choice. But as to whether we will finish or not, that is God's choice. There is always the concern that many of the mitzvahs that we observe routinely day after day will become habitual. We go through the motions. We utter the words. The question is, do we connect the words to our hearts? How many times during a day do we ask ourselves if we recited a blessing after eating or drinking anything or after we exited a bath bathroom? Are we awake at the wheel or... Are we driving along on cruise control 24-7? Whenever we perform any mitzvah, we should stop first and take a second to think about what we are about to say or do. And also, how does our action connect us to our Father in Heaven? Yes, God as a benevolent Father wants us to succeed. His Torah is our instruction manual. It demands our active participation 24-7. He expects us to be kind, courteous, friendly, charitable. In essence, he is like any loving parent who wants their children to just be nice, be a mensch. There is a saying that it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice 24-7. God does impose upon our time in our lives 24-7. We are compelled, for example, to observe the Shabbat and the Yom and Tovim. How awful. That we are required to take a day or two out of our busy lives, spend a day with family and friends, get some sleep, and maybe even check in with our Father in Heaven for a moment. We must realize 
that all that God Almighty demands of us is for our benefit, not his. It makes little difference to God Almighty whether we keep a mitzvah or not. It does not change him in any way, much like we as loving parents. When our children succeed or if they fail, in the end, it is their lives. 24-7, Orthodox Judaism by its very nature compels us to establish a daily routine, especially if one prays three times a day. Developing a routine allows us to put our lives in order. You know, even a bad routine is better than no routine at all. You at least have something to work with. Without any routine, you are constantly making it up as you go along. The end results of this approach are usually negative. Good habits will always, always produce good results, a recipe giving, given to us from a benevolent creator. Just serving God is a 24-7 opportunity. Let's not waste it. And with that, let us help to usher in the coming of Shia Tzikainu quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. Again, I think that the second part of our lecture, which we've been doing for quite a while, um, after Shavuos in a couple of weeks, what I'd like to do is, I've written a, at least 25 original songs that connect to prayer and to service of God that I would like to uh, pass on to you, explain, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing that right after Shavuos for the second part of, the, of this lecture. Uh, again, if you have any questions, if you have any topic that you'd like to uh, hear about, please contact me and let me know and I'll see if I can bring it to you. Again, thank you very much for attending. Shabbat Shalom. God should bless you with health, with safety, and with joy. All that is good. Thank you again for attending.